I, I love it here and every time I come I feel jealous of people who get to work here. This is really wonderful. Um, so what um, I'll tell you today is uh, mostly based on uh, two papers. Uh, one with uh, Ciprin Manalescu. So this is based on joint work with uh, Ciprin Manalescu, who is my colleague in California. So that's reference number one. Reference number two is uh, work with a number of people. So it's easier to remember it by the title. It's called uh, 3D modularity. And uh, again, it, it has a number of authors, but most prominently it has uh, Francesca Ferrari among collaborators. And since Francesca is here, a local, uh, she's right here in the audience, you can ask her all kinds of questions. If my talk is unclear, so she's responsible for everything that's unclear. Uh, I'm joking. Um, so <clears throat> the story uh, that uh, I'll tell you can also be referred to as uh, BPS uh, CFT correspondence. Um, this is the term that uh, Nikita likes, and uh, for, for a good reason. It relates uh, BPS quantities, which count some integers, Donaldson Thomas type objects, and we'll see lots of this uh, in, those, in those two lectures. And we have already seen many of this before. And connection to CFT. So my title, for example, chiral algebras, refers to chiral algebras of some super conformal theories. And uh, what's interesting is that usually we get conformal field theory from two-dimensional physics, but uh, today we'll see chiral algebras appearing from three dimensions. And three dimensions here means uh, two things, either a topology of three manifolds or uh, three-dimensional supersymmetric physics. And those two, in turn, are related by so-called 3D, 3D correspondence, so a longer version of the title. It's a short title anyway, but a slightly longer version could be BPS CFT in 3D, 3D. Or if you want a shorter version, just 3D, and that's, that's fine. Now, uh, BPS CFT correspondence itself uh, has long history, and um, in fact goes back to work of uh, Nakajima-san, and uh, later many other people have joined, uh, but going back uh, to mid-90s, that's, that's where it started, uh, there was an observation that if you start with a uh, four-manifold, in that uh, time of a very specific kind, resolution of uh, Kleinian singularities, <coughs> so let's call four-manifold M4, then to that you can uh, associate uh, differential geometric problem, so our meeting here carries the name of uh, differential geometric invariance, so typically that means solving PDEs, constructing moduli spaces, proving all kinds of cool theorems about compactness of moduli spaces, how to deal with singularities, and so on. So one can construct moduli spaces of uh, solutions to PDEs on a four manifold, so most famous uh, set of PDEs involves anti-self-duality equations, and therefore one can construct um, moduli space of solutions with uh, instanton number n, second churn class n. And uh, as one of their simple invariants, you can try to take a characteristic of such moduli spaces. So you get something that depends on n in four dimensions on a four-manifold gauge bundle is topologically classified by second churn class, so you have actually lots of these spaces. And you can uh, then form a generating function by summing over n. So this, of course, is uh, not such a modul ni nice moduli space, and uh, the problem should be replaced by uh, much better description, so in fact, uh, uh, most of the time, when we can compute something, we use algebraic geometric descriptions, and the corresponding 
better behaved object is what we now call Waffle-Witten partition function. So it's invariant of a four manifold and uh, at least conjecturally and uh, depends on Q because we just formed the generating series. And observation was that once you start your computation and topology and use a lot of differential geometry analysis and algebra to get the answer, the answer turns out to be something meaningful in algebra, which has not been put in by hand. So that was a surprise. That was a cool thing back in mid 90s when I was uh, joining the field of mathematics and physics. And to me personally, this was like wow moment. It's, you start computation in one field and you land in something completely different. And the surprise here was that this answer matches <coughs> a character of uh, vertex operator algebra. So that was precisely the surprise or interesting moment. And um, now we call this vertex operator algebra VOAFM4 because it can be realized or, I mean, by now this phenomenon can be understood as a relation between four manifolds and two-dimensional conformal field theories whose chiral algebras, of course, are vertex operator algebras. And this VOAFM4 is basically chiral algebra of two-dimensional CFT that we call T of M4. And physics of this uh, two-dimensional CFT is labeled by four manifolds as very rich, very interesting, and uh, was one of the subjects of um, Pavel Putrov's lectures. So now this phenomenon or this perspective allows to generalize this relation between waffle witten partition functions and characters in various settings. But what I want to tell you is basically a 3D analog of this story. And there will be, uh, or there is an analogous surprise relation to chiral algebras, which uh, unlike this one, we don't understand very well yet. So this had to wait at least until the series TFM4 came to the scene to, to be kind of controlled. Uh, for, so you can predict, for example, what the central charge is and various other characteristics. So here in the three-dimensional story that I'll tell you, it's still at the level of this mid-90s surprise where we cannot predict central charge. So it's uh, checkable, but it's, it's a much earlier stage of development. So the statement and the surprise of appearance of chiral algebras is that if you start with a closed three manifold, or in fact any three manifold, which I'll denote uh, M by M3, you can associate to it also some sort of, some sort of partition function. The partition function will be called uh, Z hat. It's a partition function of a three manifold, just like waffle witten partition function is partition function of a four manifold. In turn, it will be defined as a certain um, BPS quantity uh, that we introduced in a work with um, Abhijit Gade and Pavel Putrov. Uh, so sometimes this is called uh, homological block or half index. So there is this uh, GGP uh, half index of a theory T of M3, which is analogous to how theory T of M4 appears here. So there is some physics in there and I'll try to avoid physics at least in the first lecture. And surprise is that uh, the result um, turns out to be character, again, of vertex operator algebra, of a chiral algebra, but uh, of a much more uh, interesting nature. So first of all, in examples that we have seen so far, this uh, vertex operator algebra is logarithmic. And it depends on the choice of three manifold, just like this chiral algebra depends on the choice of four manifold. And uh, this statement here is precisely the statement of a conjecture that can naturally be called 3D modularity conjecture. First of all, because it's about modularity of these three manifold invariants, and secondly, because it appears in the paper by the same title. So, <coughs> My goal, therefore, today is to uh, introduce all the objects on the lower part of the blackboard, namely tell you about, first of all, this um, <coughs> GGP half index, uh, which can be constructed in any 3D n equals 2 theory, 
Um, so this will be important for certain things that I'll try to say in the second lecture. Then I'll introduce this invariance Z hat for three manifolds and uh, hopefully give you examples or enough examples uh, where we'll see that um, there is a connection to chiral algebras. So the status is very different of all, both of these three parts. So this is uh, physics, and sometimes if I want to emphasize that my discussion is physics and mathematicians can tune out, I'll label it by P, P, P for physics. Uh, it's very concrete, very rigorous, you can do it. I mean, there is a lot I can tell you about this uh, half index, and I will in the second part. Uh, this discussion of Z hat will be the subject of mostly uh, first talk. So this will be framed uh, for mathematicians mostly and uh, with theorems and conjectures and concrete statements. And um, this uh, relation here should also be called M, M for mystery, or, or this is something that's interesting. I mean, it's a conjecture, but a kind of conjecture again that uh, to me, it puts this roughly at same level as we had this observation in mid-90s. Something that uh, happens is checkable, but for instance, if I can predict what the central charge of this guy is in 2019, I cannot predict what the central charge of this is. And therefore, this is more like a challenge. So this is uh, homework to young people in the audience to, to figure out and complete the story. Okay, and of course, at any point, feel free to ask questions, interrupt me, and, uh, and stop me. So uh, one of the obvious goals, so the starting point is um, to have a, a construction of this object uh, that had for three manifolds. And I want to point out, so this is uh, therefore a 3D 2Q of T, or physically it's expected that it's a 3D 2Q of T. And uh, what it does, is the following, so to, to a closed three manifold, so I, I should say TQ of T in the sense of uh, a, la, a T Siegel. So a T Siegel uh, proposed set of axioms for how to define topological quantum field theory, and it's supposed to be a functor uh, so for me, the name of the functor will be Z hat, such that it associates uh, to a closed three manifold a number. So for us, um, this, um, this number will depend on additional data that corresponds to a choice of a root system, or you can think of this G as a kind of gauge group, and also Q, which is complex number. <coughs> so in entire discussion today, uh, G will be SU2, and again, Q is, is going to be in general complex number. Most of the time, I'll later assume that it's inside the unit disk. And then continuing with this uh, two manifolds of codimension one, two, and so on, one should associate uh, a space of states. So for example, to two manifold sigma, one should associate Hilbert space H of sigma, 
which also depends on the choices of G, Q, and so on and so forth. Um, and uh, if you want ex so-called extended TQFT, you want to continue, but I'm not going to continue further down today. In fact, I'll try to focus mostly on the first line. So today, we'll talk about uh, this line here, where we'll talk about closed manifolds. And in order to have a TQFT structure, what's important is to be able to do uh, cutting and gluing uh, of your three manifolds, so M3 plus, M3 minus, along various surfaces. And in general, you can cut along, say, genus G surface sigma, but for my discussion today, I'll only restrict to cutting and gluing along tori. So in fact, uh, we'll barely talk about the second point, and when we do, we talk about cutting and gluing in genus one. So extension to higher genus is a good problem to work on. Yes? So uh, that, that cut is a linear operator from A to A, so actually you draw a single axiom. Yes. It's not an operator from H to H. It's uh, a functor from uh, cobordisms between two manifolds into uh, indeed linear operations for the on H's. Yes. Correct. Yeah. So, so my goal uh, of this entire two lectures is to describe to answer this question essentially. So the entire two lectures will be devoted to understanding how G comes, well, not so much how G comes in, so today it will be uh, set to SU2 and fixed once and for all. Uh, I don't think I'll discuss any generalizations for sake of time, but Q, how that enters, will be prime subject, so the whole two hours uh, that will follow will be addressing this question. Yeah, thank you. So, <coughs> The, there are several things uh, I'll try to tell you or, or what will follow uh, will fit into. So first of all, therefore, the goal is to construct this TQFT. And uh, like I say, I see I'm very honest about open questions and challenges, such as understanding, for example, this log view A is, is, is a good challenge and open avenue that, that uh, is good to work on. Likewise, constructing this for higher genus, uh, this cutting and gluing. But um, luckily for our discussion today, um, the case of um, genus one is going to be enough um, because uh, there is a theorem due to uh, Lee Corish, Wallace, and Kirby, and others. which says that uh, every connected uh, oriented closed three manifold arises by performing An integral Dane surgery. I'll explain what this is in a second. Along uh, a link, a link L uh, is a s set of embedded circles in a three sphere. So uh, in three dimensions, they can be knotted, so that's an example of a link which has two components. It has two S1s, each embedded in a three-sphere in such a way that they don't touch each other or that's, it's not an immersion. Uh, and um, a surgery operation is the following. You take such a link in a three-sphere, and then uh, you cut out a tubular neighborhood uh, 
of each link component, as a result, what happens um, is that neighborhood of, of a link consists uh, of disjoint union of copies of S1 cross a two-dimensional disk. And uh, since boundary of S1 cross a disk of each copy is a two-dimensional torus on which SL2Z acts as a mapping class group, you can try to do the following. You can remove this um, copy of uh, solid, to solid torus and glue it back using some element phi of SL2Z, again, mapping class group of a two-dimensional torus, which tells you about non-trivial diffeomorphisms uh, not connected to the identity. And as a result, once you use uh, this, this gluing, you can produce potentially a different three manifold. So claim uh, of this theorem is that all three manifolds can be obtained by such surgery operations. So in general, they're called uh, rational Dane surgeries because element phi that I'm writing here so maybe I'll avoid writing on the lower part of the blackboard, can be brought to the form uh, PQ something something. And then this operation is called P over Q rational surgery. But the statement of the theorem is a little bit uh, stronger and is a little bit nicer. It says that instead of talking about general P over Q rational surgery, you can always restrict yourself to the case where Q is equal to one. So that's called integral then surgery. So then surgery, is operation I explained a moment ago. And integral means that you can restrict yourself to integer coefficients rather than general p's and q's. So that's kind of nicer. What it means in practice is that to perform this operation, if I have a link, say link with the two components, I have to decorate each component with an integer number. That's basically the value of p. So I have to assign to it value p say p1 here and p2 here, which have to be integers, and they will tell me what kind of surgery I'm performing. Okay, is this clear? So I guess if you want to go from the rational to the integral surgery, you might have to complicate the integration. Exactly. So, uh, right, so then there is a whole machinery. That's where Mr. Kirby, Rob Kirby, comes in. Uh, so first of all, maybe before I comment on this statement, I should say that what he proved is that <coughs> any two different presentations, uh, so there are many different ways to construct the same three manifold starting from different links uh, and nodes. And what he proved is that any two such presentations are necessarily connected by so-called Kirby moves. We'll see examples uh, in a little bit. And uh, in particular, using this Kirby moves, one can undo uh, rational surgery into sequence of integer surgeries. So that's, that's one way to understand why integrality is uh, sufficient for this construction. So you can just a matrix in uh, essentially, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's a, it's a little bit more complicated because, um, I mean, you, you have, still you, you need to mention this, this Kirby moves because if you're doing it on uh, components which are unknots, uh, things are really easy. But if, if they're knotted, then, then it's not just algebra. It's also a little bit of topology. Any, any other questions? So the upshot is that uh, any three manifold can be constructed by such surgeries on uh, links uh, and knots. Not, not is basically a link with a single component. So therefore, in order for me to construct uh, this uh, functor, this uh, topological invariant that had, I'll need uh, either construction for three manifolds or construction for knot complements and crucially, ability to glue, to do the surgeries. In other words, not just have a knot complement, but rather to glue it back. So. Therefore, there'll be two parts in my story. One is uh, how to construct this Z hat for not complements. And second is how to do the gluing. These are surgery formula, uh, formulae. Okay. So um, <coughs> here's, uh, 
here, here we go. Any any other questions? Now Before I go on, um, I want to point out uh, that uh, why, why are we doing this? So why, why is it uh, interesting or useful? So <clears throat> um, there are many motivations which I'll mention along the way. And part of the motivation, of course, is interesting connection to chiral algebras that, that, that appears and uh, many others. But from the sake of topology, if you're trying to define topological invariants, you want them to be strong and interesting. So. <clears throat> um, when I was giving a version of this talk about a year ago, uh, Mike Friedman posed uh, the following question. So he pointed out that there was a nice uh, work by Louis Fonar, uh, which I'm going to uh, write here on the board, the, the name of the paper, uh, because it basically explains uh, what Mike's question was. So. Um, the title of the paper is uh, Torus Bundles Not Distinguished by uh, TQFT Invariants. And uh, torus bundle, also known as uh, mapping torus, is a particular three-manifold constructed by taking a two-dimensional torus times an interval and identifying both ends uh, by also element of the mapping class group, which already appears on the blackboard. So you take this identification means that x0, where x is a point on a torus, is identified with phi of x1, where phi again is that same element of SL2z, uh, not surprisingly because we're using two torus, and mapping class group of a two torus is SL2z. So the picture for this is you have a two-dimensional torus uh, at each point on a circle S1 base, and a three-manifold is constructed by fibering this two torus over S1, the monodromy parametrized by SL2Z matrix, very similarly to how we used uh, SL2Z matrices in surgery operations. And then, <coughs> um, as title of the paper suggests, Louis Fonar gives examples of such mapping tori, fairly simple three manifolds to be honest, uh, such that no existing TQFT invariants, including quantum group invariants of Witt and Rishitichin tori, can distinguish them. So his uh, point was simply that if you take uh, M3 constructed in this way using monodromy phi and M3 constructed monodromy, uh, using monodromy minus phi, uh, you already get such pairs of three manifolds, let me call this M3 and M3 prime, such that uh, many uh, existing invariants are blind to, to, to these pairs. So I'm not going to go in detail, but I just want to give you a character of this um, of the statement. But the question that Mike Friedman was asking when I was describing the z-hat invariance, he asked a very natural question. Uh, what about the z-hats? Are they any better than existing invariants? Existing is an important word because existing at 2013, and the story of z-hats roughly starts around that time. So I claim that this is probably the last year when a paper with such title can be written because z-hats, one of the claims will be that this functor that we're going to describe does distinguish these pairs. So it's, it's, it's a, for topology's sake, it's a pretty strong invariant. Moreover, uh, for some values of phi, which are supposed to be this SL2Z matrices, uh, 
the construction I gave you here is closely related to construction by surgeries. Um, so we are talking still about the same, roughly same class of manifolds. For example, if phi is minus st times st using standard s and t generators of SL2z by two by two matrices, if you multiply it out, it's going to be one, one, minus one, zero. In this case, uh, your three manifold is a surgery, surgery uh, with coefficient p over q, which is then general Dane surgery on a knot k, is usually denoted in this way. You say that you work in a three sphere, k is your knot, and p over q is the surgery coefficient. So in this case, uh, you can realize this particular manifold, which is uh, a torus bundle over a circle, as a surgery on a knot, in fact, on a rather simple knot called trefoil. So knot 3-1 looks like this. It's a knot with three crossings. That's why three is part of the notation. And surgery coefficient is actually zero. So it's a zero surgery on a trefoil. Likewise, if phi is, uh, in this construction, is minus st, st inverse, then what you get is monodromy matrix one minus one minus one two. And in this case, the manifold that you're talking about is also a zero surgery, but on a different knot, it's a zero surgery on figure eight knot. Uh, and primes are the same where monodromy matrix is minus phi. No, that's the definition. I'm asking what they are. You said they, they're, they can't be single, so they're taking pairs. Uh, well, yes, I, I, well, I gave, uh, in fact, I gave using, what I'm saying is that there are two cons. Case, can you say the there are not surgeries on simple knots, as far as I know. I mean, they, they don't have to be, they can be described using as mapping tori, so this gives this definition. But. Uh, it's well, it's, it's, it's a pair for mapping tori defined with monodromy matrix phi and minus phi. These are just examples. So these are examples, but I want to emphasize to make this crystal clear that uh, if you take a general phi, which is a cell 2 z matrix, it's not gonna be surgery on any knot. So therefore, uh, I mean, sorry. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm just saying that these two constructions, the two I gave you, overlap in some cases. But overlap does not have to be all-encompassing. So it just includes, for example, these two members. But, but uh, the pair where M3 is constructed from minus phi is still a pair. It's just not a surgery on a knot. But, but it's, it's a surgery on a more complicated link. So, and I don't know what the link is off the top of my head. Any other questions? So either way, what we're learning is that uh, in order to have constructions, you have to have, again, two things. You have to understand what these invariants are for, say, not complements or um, either link complements, and you have to have a way to glue the solid torus back. In other words, you have to have the surgery for not. So with this motivation in mind, and kind of preview that these are going to be fairly strong invariants for topology sake, and uh, some of the constructions, next I'll try to give you actual construction of this invariant, say how to define them. Um, <clears throat> so, Special case of <coughs> of, of uh, surgery which I call uh, affectionately called surgery on unlink. Unlink is uh, like unknot or so unknot is a, is a knot which is just boring circle. Uh, I mean figure eight knot with four crossings or this picture of the trefoil knot obviously have some interesting topology. So you can form, uh, maybe I should call this uh, 
Hopflink or generalized kind of Hopflink. Uh, maybe that's a better name. You can take a bunch of copies of a knot uh, like this and um, if there are not, if, if each component is not individually knotted, you can encode this data of uh, uh, surgery on such uh, circles that can be linked to each other, but each individually has no interesting linking with itself uh, in terms of the graph. So you replace each uh, link component by a vertex. So in this case, there are three components, so there will be three vertices, and each time they are linked together, you can draw an edge. Okay. In principle, you can have loops in this kind of uh, diagrams by, by having them uh, loop around a number of times. Um, huh? uh, for, for simplicity, I'm saying in a special case, so let me start with a special case when we'll do surgeries on, uh, oh yes, uh, simple linking and unknots. Yes, correct, correct. So they just yes, ju they just do this, yes, exactly. So let's. We, we, we will add this uh, in a second. We will we'll generalize this in a second. First, I want to start with this, and we will we'll generalize this. To, like, like I say, my goal is to define this for any closed three manifold. So we will we'll, we'll, we'll do surgery on arbitrary complicated links in a second. What are my, what are my uh, very good question. So I'll come back to this. It's one of my favorite examples. I love it, but obviously it, it's not included here. Yes, that's correct. Thank you. Uh, well, the reason I love boramine rings is because if you do boramine rings, uh, for those who know, uh, have the property that if you do zero surgery, they have three components. If you do zero surgery on each component, you get a three-dimensional torus, which is also in the class of mapping tori with monodromy matrix one. So it should be a fairly simple example. So we'll come back to it. I, I, I love this example. So it's also an example where you can construct it by surgery and also as a mapping torus and of course in many other ways. So anyway, good. And it has fairly large B1, B1 is equal to three. So that's kind of like a random three manifold, very, very non-simply connected. But anyway, uh, now slowly going, going back. So as we agreed, you have to do a surgery with some coefficients. So you have to specify integers on each component. So for example, this one I want to label by minus 157, this one by plus three, this one minus four. And uh, these are Dane surgery coefficients, which therefore have to be recorded in this uh, data of the graph as well, minus 157 plus three, minus four. So what we're uh, in this case, you can encode this data of a link in terms of a graph uh, whose vertices are decorated by integers. So therefore, uh, in, at least for this class, I have to tell you how to construct this uh, Z hat in terms of um, uh, this, this data of, of the graph. It's convenient to introduce uh, a matrix Q which will be adjacency matrix of this uh, graph gamma. In other words, you'll say that Q uh, has the following values in slot IJ. It has a value of the surgery coefficient. Let me call it AI. So AIs will be this surgery coefficients. You can call them A's or P's. Uh, I don't know what the best notation you prefer. Uh, if I is equal to J, if it sits on a diagonal, it has value one if I J connected by edge, and uh, zero otherwise. So that's the usual definition of the adjacency matrix for, for a graph. And then uh, you can give uh, a very uh, explicit uh, formula for, for, for this invariant uh, Z hat in this case. So definition is that 
in cases of such three manifolds constructed um, by graphs, M3 uh, obtained from, from the surgeries on hope links or generalized unlinks, um, is given up to overall power of Q and possible phase that I'm going to ignore. That's not going to be terribly important for me, at least in the beginning, uh, as a principal value integral of um, variables xi on the unit circle such that the number of these variables is the same as number of link components. In other words, every time you do a surgery, you introduce a variable xi, so there will be x1, x2, x3 in this example, complex variables, which live in C star. <coughs> and we'll define this as an integral over, let's say, xj's, xj over 2 pi i xj, then um, product um, over uh, all vertices of the, of the graph uh, with factors uh, xj minus 1 over xj to the power uh, 2 minus degree or valency of the vertex j times times a theta function for the quadratic form Q. So a theta function is a sum over lattice, lattice with the quadratic form Q. Uh, in this case, it's going to be, for example, three-dimensional lattice. I'm going to raise this example in a second. But since there are three link components, uh, we'll have a three-dimensional lattice. Um, <coughs> it depends on x variables and Q. It also depends on characteristics, which I'll call A, which take values in co-kernel of our quadratic form Q. And therefore, the answer will depend on these guys as well. So let me call these labels maybe A or B. Huh? What? A was not very good because components well, yeah. Unfortunately, the, 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 this, uh, there will be lots of A's uh, to, to come. So I'll, I'll have much worse version of this issue that, that notations will be too similar. The yeah. measure is also broader. Huh? The measure is also broader. Uh, the measure, yeah. So in fact, uh, when I was writing this, thank you, I realized I should have said product uh, here in, in the beginning. So yeah, it's, uh, let, 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 let me write it as product over J inside the vertex set, dxj over 2 pi i xj. Yeah, sorry. That's, that's a better way to write this. So now I'm going to erase this example. And uh, also, you can quickly see that for uh, this definition to be uh, meaningful, <coughs> it's better to, or interesting, uh, it's better to require that uh, this quadratic form is definite. So let's make this assumption. I think in my notations, it's better to be negative definite, but you definitely want some kind of definiteness <coughs> for this integral to produce uh, a nice Q series. So statement, uh, which is a theorem formalized in the paper with Cipri and Manalescu, but all the ingredients, in fact, are taken from the paper with uh, Dupe, Pavel Putrov, uh, sorry, G. PPV and uh, uh, Kumar and Buffa, and also a couple of ingredients from this 3D modularity paper is that uh, this definition has a sequence of nice properties. So there'll be uh, a total of four properties. Uh, first, one of which is that this object constructed in this way is a convergent Q series. Uh, inside the unit disk when absolute value of Q is less than 1. Second uh, property is that this object, or second statement of the theorem, is that this, this gadget defined in this way <coughs> is uh, 
a power series with integer powers of Q and integer coefficients, uh, possibly up to uh, overall rational power, I'll call it uh, D sub B, which may take rational values, but the rest is of the form C0 plus C1 times Q plus C2 Q squared, where all the CIs are integers, and um, therefore this is basically element of Q to the D sub B, uh, Z of Q. That's the second state. So, third statement is that uh, this object defined in this way uh, is invariant under Kirby moves, which I mentioned a second ago, and which at the level of these graphs means that you can do certain operations on the graphs encoding the link data. For instance, if you see a configuration of two vertices labeled by AI and AJ and connected to something else, you can equivalently replace it, so this is equivalence, by configuration where you have AI plus minus one, uh, plus minus one, AJ plus minus one, you don't change the rest of the graph, but in terms of link data, you create one more link component, which is linked to other things. So that was part of the move where you allow to change uh, <coughs> um, your link on which you do the surgery and claim is that three manifold uh, is not gonna change. So that's uh, one of the Kirby moves. There are many others and uh, it's easy to show, well, it's not entirely easy, but it's important to show that with some assumptions on this graph, uh, which is definitely holds for all definite, but you can weaken this assumption, it's invariant under all such moves. Exactly, yeah. So, yeah. so these are only the ones that keep the same graph. Right, exactly. So, so I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, You'll stay in the world of this kind of hopefulings, yes, exactly. I'll, I'll transition to Kirby moves which involve non-trivial knots in a second, yes, correct. So these are simple illustrations. So, so I apologize because this is not like one month course on topology. I, I won't give you full encompassing presentation on definition of Kirby moves. I'll just give you illustration of what they are in the context which we can easily see in examples. So it, it will be uh, incomplete in that sense. Oh yes, correct, correct. Yes, exactly. I'm, I'm saying what, what the statement of the theorem is. Yeah. But the point is that this theorem says that for graph manifolds, you have this expression, and this expression only depends on the homeomorphism type of the manifold, not yes, the correct. Yeah. In fact, uh, indeed, this, this brings a more interesting point that if you show uh, so in this world, actually, if you show that it's invariant under these moves, it actually guarantees that uh, you have invariance under a much larger set of Kirby moves. So I'm not going to refer to, uh, again, those more general statements, but I'll, I'll come back to knots in a second. And we'll see examples of non-trivial Kirby moves that change you, for example, that produce the same manifold from surgery on a trefoil and figure eight, and we'll have analog of this statement. So I'll, I'll give you an example, yeah. Correct, right, so sometimes, uh, yeah, sometimes this gamma is called, I raised it, is called plumbing graph, yes, thank you. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's another name for this. No, no. So that's why it's an important statement and th th that's why this theorem is going to be warm up so this theorem is uh, warm up for the general case. And 
more general case, let's ask how it's different. It's different in a way that if you have a graph, kind of like, uh, for example, this one, you may want to take, again, in the context of links, what, what does this mean? This means that you have uh, one component linked to another, linked to another, and uh, then they do something else, right? So you may want to take, uh, to, to generalize it, what you really want to do is to replace this component by some non-trivial knot. So for example, what I want to be able to do is to take uh, trefoil in place of this on knot and uh, perhaps do the same thing with every component. So then I'll be in a completely general class. So therefore, uh, what we really need is analog of this formula of this definition which works when each component is an arbitrary knot. So claim, Sorry. yeah. At least that doesn't follow from what you said before. So the theory of closure of the link fish, et cetera, is that there's some link, but not every link is just a, 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 a the union of the same link being collective bargaining. Yes, 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 exactly. Yes, 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 I, I totally agree, yes, yeah. So we have to produce analog of this formula for links. For arbitrary links, yes, yes, exactly. So therefore, uh, the statement uh, will be, yeah, so you can, depending what generality you want uh, right away or, or in, in half an hour. Um, so th this is warm up for uh, what we're gonna do next. And if you want to replace one component by say, not K, um, what you want to do is to have analogous formula where, uh, Remember, this guy come equipped with uh, xj, the variable that got integrated. So therefore, claim is that what's going to change in this formula is that instead of factor involving this xj minus xj inverse uh, to this uh, degree, what you'll have, so this will be uh, replaced or there'll be additional factor that depends on that particular xj. It may also depend on q and it surely will depend on the knot k if you want to do non-trivial surgery on, if you want to replace it by knot. So there will be a factor in this formula that depends on k, on choice of a knot. And of course, now you can guess what the most general statement is. It will be such that there will be fl for link l with any number of components that depends on variables x1, x2, all of them. So my goal is to tell you what these f's are. So morally, uh, what this, so therefore, as I said in the beginning, the story is going to be about this TQFT, and in order to do the surgeries, I'll have to have two ingredients. I'll have to have, first of all, what this Z hat is for not complement, or maybe since you prefer more general statements, I'll write link complement. And that's going to be exactly what I'll call F sub L, that depends on many X's and Q's. So I'll have to have, first of all, definition of this guy, and secondly, I'll need a surgery formula. I'll need a gluing. So, okay. So therefore, each, uh, everything I'm going to say will have uh, essentially two versions of the statement. One for closed three manifolds after we do the surgery and one for uh, many folds with toral boundaries before we do the surgery, this link and not complement. Okay. But uh, I didn't quite finish the statement of the theorem, so uh, there is a fourth statement, and fourth statement says that if you take the limit of uh, this Z hat invariance for a three manifold M3, uh, when q goes to exponential of 2 pi i over k, where k is an integer, and often called the level, what you get is uh, witten rishi tihin derived invariance of that same three manifold at level k. And k uh, in, in at least usual Tron Simons invariant theory is usually assumed to be integer. So, therefore, the picture that I want you to keep in mind is that 
on Q plane, we have the unit disk uh, where this objects Z hat are defined and exist when Q is of absolute value less than one. It may be crucial to say less, strictly less, because they're maybe divergent on the unit disk, but they have an interesting property that if you try to go to roots of unity, you recover a traditional quantum group invariance of Witten, Rishi, Tichin, and Turait. And those are only defined at roots of unity. In fact, uh, Witten would emphasize they're only defined for integer k, not rational k. Uh, yes, it depends, right, so Rishitihin and Turaev, that's why I said Witten. Uh, Rishitihin and Turaev define them for rational k, uh, only rational k, when k, k is in q, and Witten would insist that churn simons theory with compact gauge group makes only sense for integer k. So, anyway. Uh, th this is a limit, this is a limit. Yes. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, th that's true, except that you, you have to call it Rishi Tichin to arrive in Berlin. That's what I said. I answered your question. Uh, I don't think it was clear. So, so it's called it's the Galway Garden. Yes, yes, yes. Correct. So if uh, you insist on having arbitrary rational values, then call them Rishi Tichin to arrive in Berlin. Is this clear? Any other questions? So, <clears throat> therefore, I'm not going to, in, uh, unless you give me an extra hour, I'm not going to repeat all the statements of the theorem uh, line by line uh, in the future. I'll give you several versions of the theorem for knots and links uh, correspondingly. And uh, when I say theorem, and I just tried something telegraphically, it means that all items are true. And uh, with Chiprin, we found a way to abbreviate this, uh, I think, which is typical uh, in math literature and they're very clever. Uh, so uh, instead of saying, uh, let's assume that, uh, for example, in this context, the, for, the linking matrix is definite, that this quadratic form is, uh, say, negative definite, which was important for this to be convergent inside the unit disk. So instead of saying these things, uh, the statements of future theorems, you should always understand uh, whenever make sense for defined, defined as a Q-series, the following items will hold true. And then in the case of knots and links, I'll have the corresponding versions of, first of all, integrality statements uh, and um, uh, invariance under Kirby moves and, and, and uh, relation to uh, Rishi Tichin to arrive or within Rishi Tichin to arrive in variants. So, <clears throat> um, so then what, what I'm going to tell you about uh, this, this things is um, um, three types of statements. So, when I'll describe future properties and generalizations, how to do surgeries on, on more general knots and links, there will be um, uh, statements of, uh, first of all, reformulations of this theorem, but also uh, statements that can be characterized in several groups. So one will be uh, statements that uh, relate this to witten rishi tichin turaev invariants. But in the case of uh, links and knots, analog of Witten, Rishi, Tichin, Thrive invariant is a color Jones polynomial. So there'll be relations to Jones and WRT. And this is an example. There'll be statements uh, how such invariance this Z hat is related to a complex Chern Simons theory. In particular, since we talk about SQ2, its complexification is SL2C. So there will be statements about relation to SL2C Chern Simons. 
And since this is workshop or conference on differential problems and moduli problems, there will be moduli spaces in this game, namely moduli spaces of flat SL2C connections on three manifolds. And when we talk about not complements, we'll uh, talk about a polynomial, which describes uh, flat connections on not complements. So that will be one clue or way to see that what we're dealing with, <coughs> this Z hat, is actually uh, SL2C Chern Simons theory. So another name for this functor, if you wish, is to say that morally, so what, what, what this second type of relations imply is that you can think of Z hat is uh, SL2C Chern Simons TQFT. And I have to say that. Uh, for almost 20 years, we were trying to make sense of SL2C Simons TQFT, which would enjoy cutting and gluing. So this goes back to even my kindergarten work on a polynomial and then worked with many other people when we invented various partition functions. But those partition functions never behave nicely under cutting and gluing. So they never form a TQFT in the sense you cannot do surgery. And only recently, with the help of young people, which include Dupay, Pavel Putro, Francesca, and others, uh, this was made into a TQFT structure. So that's why you know, I'm personally excited about it. And the third type of relations that I'll illustrate, so there will be relations to Johns and WRT. This will happen always at roots of unity when Q goes to exponential of 2 pi i over k. I'm not going to assume that k is rational. I'll just talk about integer values. <coughs> There'll be relations to complex chern simons theory. And finally, there will be relations to um, uh, to arrive torsion uh, that's in the case when manifold is closed. But if manifold is a not complement, which is again important for surgery, to arrive torsion is known as uh, Alexander polynomial. And this last aspect is perhaps the most interesting. It's most interesting because, first of all, it gives connection to something that's readily computable. So I started by talking about uh, invariance of four manifolds constructed out of moduli spaces. And now I want to emphasize that those are hard. So I myself used to work on them quite heavily, but now I would not even suggest to a student to study waffle witten partition function of a four manifold, just because moduli spaces are too hard. You can do one at a time and it takes you a year to complete. Here, you can do a bunch of surgeries, construct a bunch of three manifolds in a split second. So the moduli spaces involved are fairly simple. So it, it, we will do differential geometry on three manifolds, but it's very simple. It will be much, much simpler than the uh, case of four manifolds. And this last point is, uh, will provide a bunch of relations to derive torsion and Alexander polynomial in such a way that will make this um, um, this, this uh, structure very, very computable. So it will be very straightforward, and part of it will be due to the fact that Alexander polynomials and Turaev torsions are readily computable, are very simple invariants. Of course, they won't capture everything, but uh, these relations will be strong enough to help us uh, go along the way. So, um, Yeah, I think uh, this is uh, probably a good place to stop since I, I think, exhausted most of my time. So let's, let's take a break here.